Here I am back again for episode seven of Brento Cast. What a week, guys. I hope I've got my level set. There's a lot of talking going on beneath the studio, and uh, I can hear it, but it looks like it's not picking up on the recorder, so I'm hope- hopefully you guys aren't hearing tons of mumbling in the background. Yeah, this is take two. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you are hearing that, I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. One of the limitations of recording these on Monday mornings, which are my work days on quick breaks, but... Um, what an amazing weekend we had um, here at the Brento Command Center. We are once again manifesting a beautiful and amazing week full of activities and fun for Delilah and myself and all of us. General well-being. Been detoxing, feeling pretty good from that, doing pretty good on that. Just got to get back to the uh, feeling energetic enough to do the workouts. But uh, we are both on track uh, for a uh, leaner vacation this year at the beach and that's what we're that's what we're going for just so we have more energy to you know sort of pour into Delilah activities and keeping her absolutely entertained at all times and uh you know enriched at all times that's kind of my number one goal right now I have been really into ripping VHS as I mentioned in the last episode and at long last I think I've got things sort of dialed in whereby I can back up all of my VHS. Um, by, the, by the way, I have an uh, unboxing of 40 VHS tapes coming sometime this week, probably Wednesday. Um, so I'll probably release that directly to the VHS Graveyard fan page. Um, but I digress. It's exciting to be expanding again, although it looks like another lot from Blockbuster. So probably have a lot of the stuff actually the tape that made me get the lot was called lone wolf mcquade it's a favorite chuck norris film of mine which i don't actually have the vhs for so always been kind of keep my eye out for that and that's just generally what makes me buy lots here and there it's like i don't want to pay more than a bucket tape i'd really like to be paying more like 25 cent a tape or 50 cent a tape but some you know vhs that i don't have in my collection would be uh would be optimal so that's how i sort of look for lots to bid on and occasionally people aren't so nuts with the price although i did pay 11 bucks with shipping i think for one tape that was uh, i'm starting sort of a uh erotic thrillers uh type section that i did not have previously have now to clarify it's not pornography you know it's it's really just kind of like um the sultry ladies of the 80s in action scenarios where it's like a um you know woman that's a female-led uh you know police officer or detective not exactly in the cynthia rothrock martial arts mode but really more of like um oh there's this there's this beautiful heiress and uh you know she's apparently killed her rich husband to you know get all of his money but then you know there's a MacGuffin it always turns out not to be her so it's really just kind of like a thriller just sort of with that female lead uh, sometimes there's minor nudity not always it's not really about that it's just a genre um, that I used to watch back in the day I haven't watched those in years but I noticed that some of those are sort of coming up and um, Shannon Tweed and then I forget we I did a little uh, watch along of a film called The Granny where there's a girl that's very much in that Shannon Tweed typecast and I sort of looked her up and there's a bunch of films in this genre she's done as well but anyway I digress um, I've gotten a few of those and so I thought I would start me a little section of that so I, I got maybe th- four or five of those uh, which you can watch the unboxing actually right on the vhs graveyard fan page on facebook moving right along this week what do we do we uh took delilah to um dan nicholas park very early on sunday we were literally the first people in line at the gym mine we did the gym mine uh we rode the train we did the carousel and we did it so early. We actually started with the gym mine. We were literally the first uh, folks down there. And just as we were finishing up, I had never done that before. Obviously, Delilah had never done it before. She had a blast, all the water and the sand and stuff. It was just like playtime for her. Um, Nancy really pushed us for the $50 bucket. And I was like, no, let's get the $25 bucket. And I'm glad that I did because after we cleaned everything off and we were packing up to go, She got preoccupied watching me do all the work. I don't know what the deal was. I was carrying Delilah, but somehow she managed to just leave the gemstones sitting out there. So she went to the trouble of washing them and just left them sitting there. So 25 bucks, whatever. But that really was for the experience for Delilah, not so much the gemstones. They're cheap. You can get them anywhere. There's a place in town, actually, where you can get them. Uh, They don't even bother with the dirt. You just go pick out the ones you want. For three bucks, you fill up a bucket. So there's not a lot of value to the actual stone itself. 
But, you know, it's a keepsake and whatnot. But um, got her a little uh, clear gemstone with a, a bug embedded in it and magnet, sort of like a refrigerator magnet. She thought that was cool. Um, she's just having a blast, you know, and I, reflecting on that, that's what it's all about, just having her having fun with her childhood and capturing these memories. I'm dedicated to producing that vlog every week. And this is just kind of an add-on to that to talk about what we did over and beyond what you hear me saying from behind the camera. I mean, it's another reason to do these Brento casts. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm already at seven. Some of the work I hope to do this week is to actually get the uh, episodes on a new platform. The simple podcasting plugin, which ostensibly is supposed to be free, turns out will not propagate your um, your media out to iTunes and Spotify and whatnot. Uh, they want you to pay for a service. That service was supposed to be real cheap. I looked into it. It actually has gone up. And I was like, no, I'm not paying that. That's ridiculous. Not when I can do it for free. So I looked at my old podcast and what I had published that on. I think it's called Cool Podcasting or something like that. Cool Podcast Plugin. Um, it does it for you for free. And you're just basically it's just kind of pointing the RSS feed. And uh, you were still hosting the files on your regular web space if you have a website so why should you pay somebody else to host them again just didn't make sense to me but the long and short of it is you have to install a new directory for every podcast so now that i've got two i've actually put the first uh vhs graveyard up and it seems to be working um so we were supposed to record episode two of that uh, but harrison wasn't able to make it sunday due to hurting the back or something like that but uh you know, we've been going really hard on music, so, I mean, I definitely get it. I mean, I, I did not, uh, I was not mad at it because I needed the afternoon off, and so I just loafed yesterday. But I digress. We did the uh, usual thing with Delilah, was to take her off and do something fun. And then uh, we usually end that up at Baden Coffee, which we did yesterday, and that was great. I had a delicious, uh, dirty cappuccino, iced, it was great. Delilah had a good time as always and uh yeah so then we came home and summer was again one hour late picking her up on Sunday but big big whoop right um so this week I'm hoping to sign Nancy and I up for the trainer uh certified trainer course that um Stanley Community College is offering on Mondays and Wednesdays starting August 22nd I think so I definitely have to get on top of that got a pretty busy day today on the massage schedule but uh this evening I will be looking into that and I'll try to call them and make those uh accommodations for both of us to take that I'm glad to hear that Nancy's going to do it with me that means I'll definitely get to all the classes because you're not going to skip if you got somebody there to keep you accountable speaking of accountability doing the detox with her really helps because uh you know she's getting the same food that I'm getting so that's cool. Um, I think that's been going pretty well. I feel like I've lost a little bit, you know, just a drop in a bucket, but got to keep moving. It's going to be like a long-term thing. I want to get below 300, man, so bad. And I've probably got like the 30 pounds to go to do that, but I'm getting down into, you know, those um, size 46 jeans are a whole lot easier to find than size 48. Size 42 are easier to find than that. So that's where we're going, hopefully. But I digress. I digress a lot, y'all. That's one of my favorite expressions. Um, have finally uh, kind of pioneered a way to back up all these VHS because, you know, someday I might not be able to get a VCR anymore and I'll have all these beautiful slipcase VHS hanging on the wall. I want to find a way to, uh, I wanted to find a way to back those up where I could access them digitally and I've done that now. And uh, when you rip a file, a VHS file, it comes out to something like um, 3.6 or 3.5 gigabytes um so that's large you know you'd fill up drives reams of drives so i found a way to upload it to a particular service i'm not going to mention and uh they block it because obviously it's copyrighted but you can still watch it yourself so that means i could archive all these and just have access to that account and share that with you know just immediate family members and be able to watch this stuff or re-download it in a very compressed format where it goes from being 3.6 gigabytes to being like you know, I don't know, 360 gigabytes, uh, 360 megabytes. So, um, yeah, that's, I'm pretty chuffed to find that, and I've been trying to keep this thing running the whole time. And um, as it so turns out, I just finished ripping Remo Williams, or either the tape is having problems. Like looks like maybe the tape was having problems. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh, actually, it was an effect in the movie. Um, yeah, Remo Williams. Lots of horror movies pulled, ripped Runaway with Tom Selleck the other day. Um, 
I have uh, I have really enjoyed that. I actually dream about backing these movies up, and it's kind of cool to see that VHS uh, presented on my big screen TV. You know, in four three aspect ratio. I watched a bit of uh, the Long Kiss Goodnight last night, and it really took me back. You know, that's the nostalgia feeling that comes with watching these VHS tapes. However, you watch them is part of the attraction. But I digress. We didn't get episode two of. Um, VHS Graveyard recorded as planned this week, so maybe next week, who knows. Um, we are reaching out to new players to try to make Bowers Foreman able to play electric shows again with the plans of maybe playing a show on our deck out here sometime over in the fall when the weather's nice. And we have uh, got two drummers to respond, and we're going to try both of those out. And one of them is already scheduled to try out with us next weekend, and I'm looking for guys that live in this vicinity. I put, for, on my band mix account, I put 25 miles from this location as my um, my limit. And because that includes Concord, we got a ton of people. So, you know, uh, one, one of the guys here that's responded is actually from Albemarle, so that's cool. If either one of those guys works out or both, you know, one of them also plays bass. I mean, in theory... Both of those guys, one guy could be the bass player, one guy could be the drummer, and we could be back in business, you know, since uh, old Dean quit us and, uh, you know, we quit playing with uh, Joe because he was so far away and so booked up with his other bands. Um, it will be great to get back to playing electric. You know, you miss it when you don't do it. In other news, I picked up another guitar as our backup guitar uh, playing live. I felt really sketchy about leaving my J200 on the stand where – you know, some waitress is going to walk by and think nothing of knocking it over. Oh, sorry. And, you know, you've broken like a very expensive guitar. So I uh, want to have that backup axe. Between the two of us, we need to have a second, a third guitar ready to go anyway for pop strings and things of that nature. So it uh, came my way at a very good price. It's a kind of a, not a high-end model. It's made in Mexico by Martin, but uh, it's made out of Formica. It's supposed to be nylon and scratchable, and it's uh, it plays pretty decent. I do need to have the action set up on it, but uh, yeah, it plays pretty decent. It's fun, very easy to play. It's supposed to be a juggernaut. It doesn't look as big as the juggernaut models to me, but I feel like I'm all over the place this week, so I don't know what's up with that, but uh, you know, in a nutshell, <laughs> that has been my week. Um, just checking on the, on the time I do try to keep these to a reasonable length guys might be a little short this week as i've got a client coming here at 10 o'clock but um uh, um uh, things are going great man i mean like as far as the the um activities that have kind of come my way here lately um we have another acoustic gig scheduled bowers foreman on october 1st and then I intentionally skipped a month for our next one to give us time because we're working on uh, other projects, uh, production projects. So then we'll be playing the first or second Saturday in December, and we'll try to do our Christmas show on those dates. Uh, and then I think I'll have a, you know, I'll maybe be out of pocket a little bit for my birthday, and definitely some in September will be out of pocket. So meaning on vacation. Um, so, yeah, I didn't want to have it too busy. But the exciting news is a project we've been working on for a couple months now, off and on, the V Hill Brothers Project. And I think we're just going to call the album Vigil because that's how their name's spelled. And I want to do a little photo shoot when all the brothers are here from Colorado. Obviously, my friend Ron lives here. Uh, and, um, well, he lives up in uh, URI Point with the other rich folks. But I always have to chide him about that. But Harrison and I are basically doing the music and producing the thing, and they're coming in and doing vocals and maybe adding some instruments here and there. But uh, we had to do a lot of pre-work to have it where they could do their part in one or two studio days while they're here. So um, we've actually had the first session. We'll have another session, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, I think the 17th. And by then, we should have everything ready for them to just step in and do their parts um, and not in such a rushed manner. So excited about that music you know anytime you get to work in the studio it's a great thing oh harrison's back to work this week i hear gonna miss uh the extra uh, access i've had to him um he's such an amazing collaborator and partner to work on uh, all of our projects together and it's like if if i could if i could you know really there's nothing bad about that guy it's just that he and i both have that mindset that like uh we we want to work on a lot of different things and at times i look out there and go man kind of getting back to that place where I've got like four or five things going at one time, which I tried to 
winnow down as far as my projects with Eddie. I mean, I had 34 songs in active production. And here we are again, you know, doing some stuff for Ansel Brown, uh, the V Hill Brothers, and uh, a couple of one project with two other guys um, that we need to wrap up our parts on, and then a couple of our own albums. And then Harrison has a project with another like, girl artist and then he has another album where he's just using like various friends to sing his songs uh, so i know that's gosh that's getting upwards of like five product five projects for for each of us so um that can get a little crazy at times but i always find i'm most creative when i am burning you know the burning the candle at both ends so to speak creatively when i'm into a lot of stuff that requires my creative energy when I was younger, you know, I didn't burn out, but like now I do find that like, uh, after a studio session, especially if it's like more than four hours, the next day I'm just like, <sighs> exhale, you know, like, uh, it's, it's okay. You know, I don't have to be super creative today. I just got to get through this. And then like a couple of days later, you know, I'm right back there to just burn it and do it again. Hey, another great news. Finally, the earache, well, not really earache, but the stopped up ear, which I think was from my diet has gone. It did not like just miraculously happen one day like last time. It just slowly improved, slowly improved with changing the diet. And now I'd say my left ear is probably back to about 90%, 95% maybe. So it's great. It really affects my singing. Our last performance, I felt so much better about my voice because I could just hear better. And that's amazing. Um, working on some new songs for the next show. I definitely want to add uh, Back on the Chain Gang by The Pretenders. I've been playing that a lot lately. And a few other things in addition to the song, the, Christ, the seasonal Christmas songs that we're trying to, to work up as well. I know I've kind of spit-fired a lot at you here. Um, that's just the nature of my mindset this morning. Um, I'm hope, hoping that we're seeing the end of this super hot weather and can get on to some more pleasant weather in North Carolina. Fall in North Carolina. Fall lasts a really long time in North Carolina. Fall and early winter are basically the same except for you don't have the beautiful leaves. Um, weather-wise, they're basically the same, and it doesn't get really cold here nowadays until, you know, January, mid-January sometimes, and then we only have about six weeks of that. So, yeah, for you summer warm-weather lovers, this is the place. For me, I'd like to have a little more cold weather, but, you know, I don't always get that anymore. But, uh, I mean, I guess we're on this trend of the earth heating up a little bit. Um I don't so much buy into the concept that it's, you know, global warming caused by man. I think it just probably happens. If you look at the various ages, um, I think it probably happens on a couple hundred year cycle. Um, But, you know, it is different than when I was a kid. I can't deny that. The weather is not the same. Um, What have I been watching? Well, this week I watched... um, a little bit of the new season of Walking Dead, which is just like every other Walking Dead. And, and you know, it's so weird to even talk about it in such a way because it's all done to such a high level um, that I'm watching it on AMC, which I subscribe to, to through Prime, Amazon Prime, which I find is the best way to do it. You don't have to manage, you know, subscriptions on Roku and, and direct subscriptions and cable subscriptions. By the way, my cable is uh off right now i've turned it off direct tv i mean uh because it was costing me an arm and a leg and i found i wasn't using much but i do have it set to come back on october the first which is um our show date but um because there's seasonal stuff on there that i might not mind watching it and if i find it just as useless as i have found it thus far what I'm probably going to do is just cancel it for good. I've already met my commitment with them when I got it put back in. Now that we have internet access and stuff and I could do like, uh, you know, direct uh, or, or on demand, I guess is what they call it. I just found that with, gosh, Netflix and AMC and Hulu, um, I I didn't, I wasn't having time to use it. So, you know, it's a waste of a hundred bucks and it's not cheap either. So, by the way, I uh, resubscribed to Hulu last week to watch Prey, the new Predator film. Now, I will say that there's been some hubbub on YouTube about that being super woke. And um, I got to tell you, from my perspective, I think a little bit of that was just kind of manufactured. I don't think it was super woke. I think it was super good and original and set in a really cool time period. Um, You guys should check it out. 
Well, I'm going to wrap up there. That's going to put us right at 20 minutes for the week. And thank you guys for being with me. God bless you all. Hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll talk to you next week. Be sure to check out BrentBowers.com to see all of the vlogs, the weekly vlogs. There's at least two episodes. There might end up being three episodes this week. So hop over there to BrentBowers.com and check that out. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time.